Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to The Political Vigilante. My name is Graham Elwood. We have returning guest to the show, Jason Burmis, because I, for those of you who don't know, uh, I, Monday night, February 1st, YouTube demonetized my entire channel. Uh, I cannot make money on ads. They took the ads off my whole back catalog of videos, which is somewhere in the neighborhood of 2,500 videos, I think. Um, I can't make money off the Super Chats or YouTube Red, nothing. nothing. And they're doing this, and, and as of today, which is Wednesday the 3rd, another five or six channels have gotten demonic convo couch, a bunch of status coup, a bunch of other ones have all been taken down. Um, so, um, I think it's good. I think censorship's a good thing. I'm glad I'm happy. It's <laughs> I'm happy. I don't, I, I was like, America might have a little too much democracy. Let's take some away and give it to the corporate <laughs> overlords. But, um, so you've had that you've you've had this happen to you for a while, right? And we've I mean, it's one of the reasons we all got on Rockfin. I mean, I got on when they approached me a year and a half, almost two years ago. You've been on for a while. Um, so walk us through how YouTube, you know, has demand what 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 the, give us the sort of the timeline of it. And I'll say this, and I'm sure you 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 agree. While what happened to me and these other channels sucks this week, I'm not surprised because we've been watching the writing on the wall. We've seen our videos get demonetized. I mean, anytime I talked about the war in Yemen, anything like that, and this has been happening to me for three years now. Um, so this was just sort of like an unfortunate eventuality. So anyway, Jason, thanks for taking time to come on the show, man. And, um, and, and tell everybody what, what, how, how it went down for you and what you've been doing since. So thank you for having me. First of all, welcome to the party. None of this is new. Um, <laughs> so my channel, this channel that I have, which is over 13 years old. Okay. First of all, it wasn't monetized for the longest time and has now been demonetized 11 months, but this is a bigger thing because we're all going to get deplatformed soon. Okay. Let me just tell you, none of this censorship is new at all. This was happening to me back in 2007, 2008 by Google the very same company. And you mentioned Tim Poole, who shouted you out. Shout out to Tim Poole. I actually stayed at Tim's house when I went down to DC uh, for the Capitol. So like a couple days before I talked to you, I was staying there. I don't really know him well, personally, but he knows my buddy, Luke Radowski. And Luke and We Are Change were some of the first videos to ever get demonetized, okay? Mm -hmm. Now, Luke and I have known each other 15 years. They didn't like the fact that he was confronting politicians on both ends and asking them tough questions. Oh, uh -oh. you can't commit that crime. Uh oh, Whoa. and this was at a time when we didn't have our little cell phones and our magic boxes. You actually had to work at it. You know, you didn't just run it. He had a camera. Yo, shout out to Luke. Shout out to Tim. The bottom line is they don't want another narrative. Now, I, after 13 years on the channel, and already navigating past this 11 months of total demonetization, because when I did get demonetized, I shamed them a month later with a live stream of why I shouldn't be and reapplied. It's weird. I haven't heard, heard back from them, by the way. Okay. Oh, really? They didn't get back to you. They're, they're I what? can't get thumbnails they take down for me removed. Okay. Now I've never had a video removed. I want to say that right now. Okay. They blocked one video. Okay. Amongst the demonetization. Let me tell you what they blocked. They blocked me playing Louis Gomer, a Congress member, daring to say whistleblower Erica Caramello Bar's name. I think we all know who I'm talking about during this whole Ukrainian scandal. He said the name twice. That was it. Now, they didn't take that down and they didn't warn me. They just locked it throughout the world, and made it private. I appealed it. I never heard anything back. Let me tell you what I got a warning for this week, Graham. <laughs> all right. Love him or hate him, Ron Johnson, who is an acting senator, had a hearing on COVID. Now, uh, Dr. Pierre Corey talked about uh, steroid treatments in a previous um, hearing. That never got censored. A lot of doctors use that. It was a positive thing for COVID. I could talk about those steroids, but I don't. I'm not an authoritative source. I dare not get your channel in trouble. Anyway, I played a doctor talking about a drug called ivermectin and a study in Argentina. This is pre-Christmas on an MMA podcast with John Fitch. They took it down and they warned me. If I get another one, <laughs> yes. By the way, 
Ron Johnson actually just did an editorial in the Wall Street Journal about it. I've covered it. This censorship is only going to get worse. Now, I talk about over a decade ago. In 2008, on the uh, uh, anniversary of 9-11, I put out my uh, follow-up to Loose Change, Fabled Enemies. Number one in the world in Google video. Throughout the morning, throughout the day, now, Loose Change went viral through that platform. And at that time, Google had not yet bought up YouTube. So they were competing. So there wasn't quite the censorship. But even then, they delisted <laughs> Fabled Enemies. By, by the end of the evening, it was not even in the top 100 when it had bolted to number one. So I, I just want to let people know, you might think that this is about Alex Jones or conservatives. This is not. This is coming for everybody. Yeah. I've been warning forever. It doesn't matter if you're a progressive, if you're a conservative, if you're a libertarian. I am none of those things. I want to make that extremely clear. Okay. I'm, I'm Jason Burmis. I'm riding for me. I think the Constitution is the perfectly imperfect document. We need accountability. That's why we had three branches of government. We no longer have that. All right. We have a national security state. And whenever anybody tells me that these are private companies, let me tell you something. They are not. Yeah, that's that is hilarious. I mean, I just I, just to interject here, and as like, I read the book when when WikiLeaks met Google, and the, you know, Assange maps out that whole conversation. He shows you how I think it's with Eric Schwartz, the head of Google. They've been Google itself has been working with the CIA since at least 2011. I mean, the CIA loves all this data collection. So, like, as you say, none of this is shocking, and um. You know, uh, the, the national intelligence state. And look, the last time you were on the show was was a month ago for the insurrection at the Capitol. Right. And I won't call it an insurrection. See, that's the thing. L let's let's talk about that. Any kind of like real coups or insurrections, oh, they did it wrong. actual weapons, actual Molotov cocktails, cocktails, actual lives are at stake. What they don't tell you is like those four people. First of all, the girl gets shot. Terrible. OK, uh, the cop end up having a heart attack and dying later after his injuries terrible the two other people they had heart attacks i think one accidentally tased himself and the other one just had a heart attack in the crowd being amongst all those people that in no way to me is an insurrection well, uh, we can debate I, I, i'm not here to debate that I mean, all right i, I got I, you Graham. I, I just that that's that's you know I, I just think that again when we're we're moving towards everybody being a domestic terrorist and well, not only, let's point. say, this is the thing I want to talk. I, I do want to bring this up with yeah. regards to what happened at the Capitol. And because, because look, the digital deplatforming is only part of it, right? Oh yeah, it's, it's great. You're getting a, a Venmos, and I'm getting Venmos, and I'm getting PayPal's. I've had a PayPal account till two since 2007. I fully expect eventually they're going to pull that from me too. You know, I, all right. For instance, the way I navigated this thing uh, 11 months ago when they defunded me is I went hard with GoFundMe, and I did it for a year and a half. Mm -hmm. And guess what? And I leave them open for six months because they're under my videos and I have so many videos. So some somebody comes across a video, you know, three months later, sure. they can still donate. So I, I usually run six months at a time and then I deactivate them. This January, they pulled my GoFundMe. Now, all the other ones stayed. They didn't tell me why. They just said they broke their terms and service. So I, again, I shame them. I go over their terms and service. And clearly in their gram, they have the power to just pull anything they want because they want to do so. So I think that one of the reasons they did that is because I did cover the Capitol that month. But yeah. as always, basically people are paying for me to do a show sometimes three to seven times a day, seven days a week. I rarely take off. You know, I talk about issues and I cite so many mainstream sources, the only way they can strike me is through Senate testimony. Think about that. <laughs> That's yeah. insane. Well, well, I mean, this is the thing, like Jordan Sheridan, they said, oh, they pulled his live stream down because his camera guy was at the Capitol. And he's, he said the same thing. He's like, they've used, the mainstream media has used his footage. And this is the point I want to make about what happened at the camp. We can debate if it's an insurrection or not, but here's the thing. And I was afraid of this. And we talked about this when you were on my show and I've talked about it with people like what happened at the Capitol was awful, but they are going, well, we said they're going to, and now they are using it as an excuse for Patriot Act 2.0. The thing I say, like, look, we don't need new, all the laws that were broken. They're enforcing the FBI has arrested a couple hundred people. You can't bring a gun to the Capitol. You can't smash windows. Done. They got it. They've got video footage. If you said on social media, I'm going to do this. Okay. They've got intent. All these laws are already on the books. 
you don't need new laws because now what they're going to do if they're if they said my content was harmful so i'm making harmful content well you know what then the sunrise movement when they camp peacefully camped outside of uh, pelosi's office 2 years ago well, now they're domestic terrorists, I guess. Greta Thunberg is a terror leader. I mean, like you can do this with, th this is the thing. And when, when YouTube, and we all saw this, when they came up with their new terms of service last month or whatever, all this vague language, like they're real clear on you can't incite violence or promote, you know, okay, I got that. Again, that there's already laws for that. You know, it's, it, people talk about freedom of speech. For me saying, hey, I hope you die, that's freedom of speech. Me saying, I'm going to kill you, that's not protected speech. Me saying, hey, everybody go kill him, that's not protected speech. Those are crimes. That's already on the books. We don't need new laws for that on the books. If you want to debate, did Trump and Giuliani say stuff at that speech? Okay, let's get there. They got, a, they got rights to lawyers to defend themselves, and you can make a case. The, the commander in chief can't say that. Great. That's all. There's laws on the books and lawyers can debate it. That's what our court system is for, you know? And so now you just go cover something at the Capitol. I mean, so you covered it. Jordan covered it. I mean, the convo couch people covered it. I just had you guys on my shows and you showed me your video footage. So now I guess I'm, am I guilty? Am I like, I mean, it's insane to me. And so- well and the fact they took down your GoFundMe, because that's clearly what they've, I mean, that's, we all saw the writing on the wall. Like you said, this is, you've, you've been doing your show for 13 years. So you saw this early on. I saw this three, four years ago when they would just demonetize anything that calls out the, that's what's happening. Anything that calls out the establishment, anything that calls out the real people in power, that's what they're like. We can't have that at all. And then the demonetizing my channel is such a, it's so clear. Like when any anti-war video I did, they demonetize it. Now, if all I did was cat videos and makeup tips, no one would be hassling me at all. I don't know if I should start doing like hand puppets, just talking about workers need more rights, but they won't know what, you know, I don't know, just do surf videos where I hold up signs that say defund the police when I catch a wave or some shit. I don't know what to say. So now you, I want to ask you this. So you, you've, you, you obviously did the GoFundMe and it's awesome that, I mean, this, this is cool this last three days and I'm sure you've been seeing it for the last seven months that there is like a community of people who are like rallying around us, which is great. Um, well, I'll tell you what, again, since it's been now almost a year, right? I, I've been able to move people over to that Rockfin model. Now the GoFundMe was great and I used to use it as a super chat mechanism, right? So I'm able to, you know, triple stream from my office and I don't need restream IO or StreamYard or anything of that. I have the hardware for it and I could even quadruple stream. So any kind of forum that's going to let me live stream is great. I hope that Rockfin gets that uh, app because once I can do it from my phone and I can do what I do on the ground, it's even more powerful. Right. And but but we're missing that. And the thing is, we know this isn't a public square. We know this isn't an open forum. We have to move people to this platform. But then you see what happened with Parler. And I'm no right winger. I didn't even make a Parler account. I'll be quite honest with you. I, I you know, that wasn't my thing. Uh, I, I'm not a big social media guy. I use Twitter and YouTube, the two biggest ones for what it's worth. I gave up on Facebook years ago. You know, they started censoring us years and years ago, even when we were paying for stuff via We Are Change and other organizations. So, I saw Rockfin. I've been able to move about a sixth of my audience just to follow over there. And this is how I'm doing it, Graham. So uh, for those that don't know, I put out an exclusive five days a week, usually about uh, 11 a.m. I always go live with it, right? 11 a.m. Eastern time. And that way you can come in, you can watch for free. I'll leave all that free content up for about two weeks for anybody that can follow. Then I put all the archives and sometimes a special video for the premium members. They get all the premium stuff, okay? So that way everybody still gets to see my content. If you watched me on YouTube earlier today, you still missed one of the spicier videos where I can let it go and actually say things I no longer am allowed to on a platform that was nurtured by the NSA, surveils us all. I mean, I mean, nurtured, that's a light word. The, the <laughs> fact that they are in bed with NASA right now with right. quantum computing and artificial intelligence, you know, the parlor lady nailed it a, a, a little bit, you know, uh, DeSantis, I watched a lot of his today. I'm going to do a video on that. I'm glad somebody's speaking out, but they're not really talking about the big deal. And she said uh, on Tucker Carlson, and shout out to Tucker for having Jimmy and all these people on talking about this stuff. She said, look, 
What if it's worse than we think? And these tech companies have already made a Faustian bargain, and of course they have, with the NSA, with the DOJ, okay? And they're just harvesting data. So they're always going to let this go on. And what's really happening is the narratives that they want out are the ones that are being pushed forward and then censored when they say so. And that's the real bargain. Because you have to remember, pre-Snowden, all this surveillance was happening. Everybody needs to look at Hefting versus AT&T, whistleblower Mark Klein, Norris Insight Systems, all the secret servers. None of this is new. They started to legitimize it after the war on terror, Patriot Act One. Then all these other organizations are born out of the Homeland Security. Okay. Then they're like, that's not enough. We'll get these third party organizations like Stratford, the Kissinger Institute, and we'll implement them times 100 in the way of think tanks. And they'll do our dirty work. And there's even more plausible deniability. I mean, you think Mockingbird was big in the 60s and 70s, Graham? I got news for you. We ain't in Kansas. It's 2021, man. And this is getting us ready for massive deplatforming, not only on digital video platform, Graham, but again, on platforms like PayPal. That's the next thing. Oh, yeah, yeah. That's very scary. Well, it's one of the reasons why I'm such a big proponent of cryptocurrency and why they're so afraid of cryptocurrency, because they, they as you and I both getting demonetized is, is, you know, that's they take away our money. They take away our ability to do this and they want us beholden to their whole system. Right. So that's why it's like, oh, man, you know, blockchain cryptocurrency technology is like, oh, it's decentralized because now. Uh, oh, they take away your GoFundMe. They take away your PayPal. Well, so what? You know, I've got I've got crypto wallets people can donate to, and as more people adopt cryptocurrency, um, then then we're all more empowered. Which is why it's like th this is literally like the last grasp of of the ruling elite. Like they know, and what ha I'm tired, man. What happened with GameStop? They got kicked in the nuts so hard they don't know what to do, and they're just like, oh God, no. So, every, and, and what's going to happen, they're going to try to stop that, but people are just, it's like what happened with what they did in Tulsa with, with Trump's thing, where they just bought up his tickets and then they did this thing. They're just finding new ways of activism that look, look, the wall street bets people, nobody got shot with a rubber bullet. Nobody got tear gassed. No, they, and they stuck them $73 billion. They stuck these people. So, um, like you say, Going back to the intelligence community, Mockingbird is like a fucking child's play compared to what they have technologically now with all the satellites. And we're all walking around with a receiver in our pocket, you know, and and well, Graham, think about it this way. They've normalized ex-CIA directors coming on television news shows and telling you what to think. That would have never been on like an almost nightly basis. They yeah. hire them. Like, so I, I mean, it's They're beyond that. Party. I mean, the, there's, there's the, the, the ex CIA people are openly in the democratic party. They're like, Oh, it, I'm, I'm, run, I'm used to work for the CIA. Now I'm running as a Democrat. It's like, it's, it's nutty. It's nutty. But, but listen, I want to go back to a couple things there. You said blockchain, which I think that right now we have to ride any wave. And that's why Ray and Rockfin is so important because they're very, very smart, right? Converting that to an ERC 20 token, which is kind of attached to Ethereum, which just hit all time highs today was not only a great idea, but then a merit-based system to convert that. Listen, I, I heard you talking about how you're out of bank debt. It's the only way I moved my family to Iowa. It's the only way I have any sanity. It's the only way there's money in my bank account right now. And it's not perfect. Uh, I want to say this. You see, uh, for instance, PayPal saying crypto wallets are coming in. Okay. I, I, I would say this. I'm cautious with some cryptocurrencies. I'm not telling everybody to dump everything to that. I think resources and assets are just as good, but we are in tumultuous times and it's all moving into that digital realm. So you can't, you can't, you, I mean, you got to navigate it, right? We're not going to stop it. Right. So I think that's really smart, but you have to be wary and cautious because you talked about, for instance, the, uh, the betting in the shorts. I've been really cautious to weigh in on that yet. Now I'm glad that it shows how corrupt the system is at least for a week or two, but I want, I want to remind you something. In the very beginning of this whole COVID-1984 event, they just stopped the stock market like a dozen times within a week. They did it out in the open. I mean, out in the open, they, they literally said, oh, my God, the markets are crashing. We've got negative oil and just stopped it there. There was no outrage because there were so many people in fear 
of what was coming, right? And whether this was all going. So, I mean, they should have been exposed all the way then of how rigged the market is, okay? And I would say this, you wait a couple of weeks, maybe a month, maybe two, there'll probably be an editorial out there of how some savvy billionaire or upstart company was really one of the, the engines that was able to put a bunch of money into these stocks and screw over these other ones. That's all I'm saying. I, I'm saying it is a good thing that we need to get together and it did expose the system. But don't think somebody else didn't benefit from that thing. All right. Uh, there, there's a lot of work at play. They want to de delegitimize that marketplace. They're pushing very, very openly with this Davos Great Reset agenda that just happened last week. Currently, I've gone through like two or three of their talks. There are dozens, but they are very much uh, promoting a biodiversity, okay, um, what, what stakeholder capitalism market because they're worried about your well being and they're aligning COVID with climate change. And I know we probably have differing um, opinions on that, but the bottom line is they're monetizing that market in a digital manner and they're trying to do it globally. And that's not a joke. So again, as we navigate all this stuff, I think crypto is a good short-term bet. And I think that if, you, if Rockfin can maintain their own servers and they just did that server upgrade, that's why those live streams are kicking in in like 10, 20 seconds instead of like 90 seconds and going in that direction and being innovative. And listen to me, guys, we got to have instead of a super chat for like $10, people can leave like a 30 second video, go into a mailbox. Think about that interaction. And then we can do interactions with them. You know, let's get innovative because it's only innovation uh, that's going to move people to these platforms. It's only when people realize, oh, my God, a dozen of my favorite creators are gone. I have to go here. And you have to now have the infrastructure. You can't be on Amazon servers. Remember that. You know, you think Jeff Bezos is going away because he's stepping down from Amazon. No, no, no. He's in that next level Bill Gates phase where he's going to create a foundation. He's going to find a cause. I imagine it's going to be space or some bullshit like that, Graham. And he's going to become like the next czar of, of, of something else, man. Of space force or whatever he's going to, he's going to be in charge of the uh -huh. revolution or mm -hmm. whatever he's going to do. Well, uh, Jason, I, I, I really appreciate you taking the time and coming on to talk about um, you know, how we're got to get creative. And I think, you know, I'm, I'm so glad I got in Rockfin a year and a half ago and, you know, it's, it's been fantastic. And I'm glad too, that other, you know, friends of mine, Convo Couch and everybody and, and Jordan Sheridan and Kim Iverson, I'm glad they all jumped on board because it's like, th today was a bloodletting, man. Today was just like, and it's just, a, like you said, it's just the beginning. Cause the deep platforming is next, brother. Oh, yeah, it's next. Sure. And I, I need to get you on my show too. I know you're always hesitant. I actually taped this. I'm probably going to throw it up on Rockfin as an extra as well. But, but uh, Graham, I'm telling you, man, like, like I said, this is the whole thing, man. We got a band together on yeah. like all those people that were calling me a Nazi in the comments. It's like, guys, please. I'd love to sit down and have a conversation. I guarantee you spend 20 minutes with me. Not even you're going to realize I'm no Nazi. I'm here for you too. We're allowed to have diverse opinions. Yeah. It's when you can't have dissent and there is one line of thought, which is also being promoted by those these Davos people openly, man, openly. They're talking about reimagining education. They're like, we didn't have Google before. And Eric Schmidt's always talking about one answer and one narrative. And if the last 12 to 18 months hasn't scared the shit out of you on how they promote that one narrative and silence anybody. I mean, they love or hate him. He was the president of the United States and they just said, God, I know. that's unprecedented. They didn't even play his farewell address on C-SPAN, Graham. I mean, that's, that's wild. I watch me some C-SPAN to catch everything they don't play in the mainstream media. When they were playing the president saying goodbye, and it was a, it was a piss poor fucking farewell address, by the way. Piss poor indeed. <laughs> it was awful. You know, it, it showed me right away. There was no way he was going to pardon Assange. Again, we did the live streams on it and all that other stuff, but that the media wouldn't even play that on C-SPAN. I thought that was wild. We're in wild times. If they can deplatform the president, they can deplatform you. And if you think it's just about social media, it's not, it's going to be about a lot of other things, Graham. So yo, you keep doing what you're doing, man. Cause you got large reach you know, a lot of people in that left left community. And you got to let them know that, again, this isn't left or right. This is all of us. And you love or hate DeSantis. You got to get behind this big tech thing. I mean, again, I don't know if you saw it, but it's it's the most with teeth thing I've seen a governor say yet about big tech. 
Yeah, big tech is is definitely. I mean, people got to be so aware of what of what's happening and and like, yeah, and 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 how we can get creative in fighting it because I mean, like, oh, expecting you know, I mean, these politicians. I hope I hope they come up with something, but but it's it's going to take more actions to me, like Wall Street bets. It's it's, it's going to take more stuff like that to get real change because. You know, we'll say, you know, AOC and Ted Cruz are working together. Okay, great. Those two clowns, whatever. Okay, great. Like, uh, yeah, Punch and Judy are going to fix it. You know, I, I, it's just like, so, um, yeah, man. And, and it's, 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 uh, so everybody out there, I mean, a bunch of the shows that, that have just been deplatformed, including mine and Jason's been deplat or de demonetized, uh, 11 months ago, we're all on, we're all on Rockfin. So, I mean, it's free to sign up. And then, you know, for 10 bucks a month, you get all of our premium content. So what I do with my live streams, they, they stream for free. And then as soon as I'm done, I put them up on the premium side. So you get the back catalog of everything. And then I pull clips out of there, but you get the whole unedited live stream. You get the audio for it. You get all that. So you're supporting everything we're doing. Jason, I really appreciate it, man. I appreciate you coming on the show and, and, you know, supporting everything we're doing. And, and it's like you said, it's good to have different, it's okay to have discussions and debates and, uh, and just, you know, like, like last time you were on, you were bringing up some points and we didn't agree on everything, but the like, Oh, you're a Nazi is, is preposterous. So <laughs> we can't, we can't do that. And this, this is the thing I was saying a month ago, I was saying, I'm so worried they're going to use the capital thing and they're doing it. And like people on the left are like, okay with all this censorship. And I'm like, this is what happens. I'm anti-war, I'm a pro-labor socialist, and I'm getting demonetized. So if you're okay with that, then I don't know what the fuck, I don't, you can't call yourself a lefty. If you're in favor of, of, of censorship, you're not on the left. You're not a lefty. You're, you're a right-wing fascist who just has a rainbow flag on their Prius or whatever. I don't know what you, but you're not a lefty. <laughs> so um, uh, anyway, dude, thanks, thanks for watching and, and check out Jason's show uh, on Rockfin. And, you know, we appreciate we appreciate you coming by. All right, brother. Thank you so much. We'll talk yeah. soon. All right, man. Later. Thanks for watching, everybody. Please hit the like button, the subscribe button. Go to patreon.com slash Graham Elwood and rockfin.com slash Graham Elwood, where you can support the show. Also, I have a Bitcoin wallet, a Bitcoin cash wallet, and an Ethereum wallet in the show notes. We're taking cryptocurrency. I have a Coinbase affiliation link. We're going to be getting on some other exchanges. So that's how you support the show. Make sure you hit the subscribe button. YouTube is unsubscribing us at an alarming rate. I have a PayPal button at GrahamElwood.com. I even have a Venmo at Graham-Elwood. There's a lot of ways to support our show. We are getting crushed by YouTube. They're We've dipped under 73,000 subscribers because of YouTube. Thanks for supporting what we do.